And this is one of those instances where, in our judgment, it is vitally important for us to make sure that all elements of the public transport system are working, because when people go, they have to be able to get back home. If we don't make sure that those things are done right, what will happen is, is that people will try a thing. And, and we don't want them to have that opportunity. We don't want them to have that excuse. And therefore, we're putting all those other me measures in place. But that's not under the purview of the AG. That's the Ministry of Public Works. Cabinet has approved the establishment of the Constitution Reform Commission. Attorney General Dale Marshall explained that a reform, which he described as a far and wider more intensive process, will be undertaken. Cabinet has approved the establishment of the Constitution Reform Commission. I made a distinction between review, which is just looking at something that's there, and reform, which is in fact a, a far wider and more intensive ranging process. So we're embarking on a process of constitution reform. Cabinet has agreed to the composition, to the establishment of the commission. It has agreed to the, to the composition of that commission. All of the persons who we recommend for appointment have been contacted have, and have agreed to serve. And therefore the cabinet secretary is now in the process of liaison with Her Excellency for the preparation and signing of those warrants. Uh, you, you are appointed not un, well under a special instrument called a warrant of appointment, and I'm hopeful that those things will all be accomplished between now and the middle of June. Marshall was speaking while having his blood pressure checked as part of an initiative to commemorate May Measurement Month, sponsored by the Heart and Stroke Foundation and the University of the West Indies Gayfield Campus. Dr. Kenneth Connell told reporters the Heart and Stroke Foundation is set to roll out a plan to partner with barbershops across the island as part of efforts to encourage more men to regularly monitor their blood pressure. It will involve training of barbers. Uh, obviously, information is kept confidential, but we, we, don't want you, we don't want you to just have your blood pressure checked in the barbershop and have a haircut and leave, right? We want some system where that barber can kind of fast track you into a health system, maybe the closest polyclinic, for instance. I hope my barber is listening. Uh, the closest polyclinic so that you don't have to then go through the hassle because, again, remove barriers, okay? This year, May Measurement Month has recommenced on the COVID time, and so the month is actually finishing August 31st. The aim this year is really two things, to get patients to do home blood pressure monitoring, self-monitoring at home with their own machines, and secondly, to recognize that hypertension is a major cardiovascular risk. The fact that this is occurring in the middle of a pandemic is also very important. The American College of Cardiology has two weeks ago identified COVID-19 as an independent cardiovascular risk factor. So we really need to get on top of the game. The AG urged all Barbadians to treat hypertension seriously. I've um, had high blood pressure for many, many years. I'm not sure what brought it on, if it was politics or the law, but whatever, whatever the reason for it, um, I've, I've had to deal with that. And um, I've been on prescribed medication to keep my blood pressure under control for a long time. Um, I'm happy to encourage all Barbadians uh, to pay attention to this silent killer. Uh, getting regular blood pressure checks is going to be vital. And I, I don't know if I, if I dare to say in this especially um, <laughs> stressful time, mm -hmm. it's probably more important now Definitely. than ever. The explosion in the green monkey population is creating a major headache for the operator of one of Barbados's iconic attractions. The owner of Hunt's Gardens, Anthony Hunt, told Barbados today he believed the time has come for authorities to create a monkey attraction by capturing all the adorable but wild primates and put them into a specially designated habitat away from the rest of the population. He disclosed that an increase in the primate population and their foraging habits is causing a decline in the bird population at his St. Joseph attraction. The noise we are hearing of the agitated um, birds at Hunt's Gardens is quite serious for me at the minute because the monkeys come in and they've started to eat the birds' eggs. So the birds that live in this area now lay their eggs in the trees, monkeys come in. So we are having a big reduction in my birds right in this area. And what is most serious is the hummingbird because we're seeing less and less of them. And because we used to have nests nearby where the visitor could come and 
look at them, look at the chicks, not, not anymore. I don't know where they're laying, but they're obviously trying to find spots to hide them from the monkeys. But we're definitely reducing the population of the two species of hummingbirds in this garden at Hunts. And who said he was pro Colin fears that if decisive action is not taken to either control or isolate the monkey population from the rest of the populace, a bad situation could get worse. Really, we have too many in Barbados currently, and they've gotten out of hand. We have about 18,000 now, I would think. And um, the more, of course, we feed them, the more, the more babies they're going to have, so the more monkeys we're going to have. So, so you're one of them who would advocate them for culling? Most definitely. Culling, and if there's any possibility where there's huge acres of land, like maybe down at Hackleton's Cliff, um, another attraction could be planned where the monkeys actually live in a specific area and have to live in that area. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. The regional news the streets of prison workers took to the streets their destination, of Spain the office to protest of the, the chief, chief personnel officer, officer then to the Ministry of, of Finance. a 2% salary increase Pre over eight years. The offer has been rejected by several unions who say it's disrespectful and insufficient. The National Trade Union Center and the Joint Trade Union Movement are not prepared to accept the 2% offer. The unions gathered at Memorial Park to begin their day of marching through the streets of Port of Spain. Their destination, the office of the Chief Personnel Officer, then to the Ministry of Finance. President of the National Trade Union Center, James Lambert, said the unions waited too long for the offer presented by the CPO, Commander Dr. Daryl Dindial. When are you going to offer us something? When? You post and throughout and says through the Minister of Finance that there is a windfall. So we expect the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago will also celebrate part of that windfall. But instead of that, you're going out throughout the country telling the people the cost. 1.2 billion. If I give you two dollars for eight years, 1.2 billion. He said the current offer gives no redress for those who have retired. What has happened? They did not give consideration to the people who retired, who retired in 14, 16, something and 18. Zero, 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 one percent, zero, one percent. Rowley, you're mad. On the international front, in Brazil, the killing of an unarmed black man by police has led to outrage across the country. Two police officers pinned down Jenny Valdo de Jesus Santos, a black man they say was resisting arrest. They then trap him inside the smoke-filled trunk of their police car. Look at the man there. Oh my God, they're killing him inside the car, says one witness. Video of the incident went viral on social media. Protests have been held in his hometown of Umbalba in northeastern Brazil and shock and outrage expressed across the country. For years, human rights activists have accused police in Brazil of discrimination, brutality and excessive force. On Tuesday, the day before Santos died, dozens of people were shot dead during a police raid on a criminal gang in Rio de Janeiro. Yes, another massacre in a favela. It's truly shocking. We cannot allow it to be normal that the state enters a favela and leaves with 20 or more dead. 
Relatives of Santos say he was unarmed and suffering from heart problems and schizophrenia. The Federal Highway Police have opened an investigation into his death. In a statement they said Santos was actively resisting the officers who pulled him over. They immobilized him, then used instruments of lesser offensive potential to contain him. Santos was taken to hospital. Doctors say he was dead when he arrived at the emergency room. The officers involved have been suspended, but many in Brazil fear this may be another example of institutional brutality and racism within the police. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.